Welcome to Conversations That Matter. Um, this is our last um, episode for this fiscal year. And I'm just so proud that we stuck with it and we had a lot of good and vibrant conversations on the topics of race, diversity, inclusion, and social justice. So I'm glad to have all of you here, some of our our um, regulars and some of our past, hi Morgan, some of our past participants. So Afternoon. I just wanna just, um, just bring you all into the conversation and let's have a good lively conversation on how to keep the conversation going throughout the, the summer and, and just ongoing, how to, how to keep um, amplifying our, our messages, right? Because there's a lot of work yet to be done. So how do we do that? How do we continue to have these, these difficult conversations? So um, I, I wanna open it up to hear from all of you. Um, there's a lot of um, topics swirling around. Um, Morgan, I saw that you uh, had a post today about um, the blocking of voter rights and you made a comment about um, Juneteenth being, um, you know, made a holiday, and and how that works, right? Placating us with a holiday, but not really getting to the meat of the matter. So sometimes that that's the sentiment um, that that some people hold. So we can talk about that. Um, we can talk about you know some of the work that yet to be done. We can talk about Juneteenth and what that meant to folks and and where that is, we could talk about um, CRT if you'd like. Tracy, I know that, you, Terry, excuse me. I know that you talk about that a lot. There's um, a lot of stuff you talk about, Terry. So <laughs> you can you could talk about it here. We, you know, we can use this time to talk about um, how we continue to talk about the matter of race and systemic racism when people don't wanna talk about it. You know, I've been in a training um, with facilitators uh, for the last couple of days and I have one more training and um, we talk about how there are people who are still, um, you know, in denial. They're in denial about 1619, about slavery even happening, about, you know, they're, they're in denial about Juneteenth, they're in denial about systemic racism. So, you know, how do we have those conversations with, with people like that? How do we have, you know, civil conversations? Um, these conversations, like I said, they're not easy. They, they are not devoid of conflict. They're not devoid of emotion and nor should they be, right? We have to allow for that. But how do we keep talking about this and um, maintain, um, civility and friendships sometimes, you know, and family members. So uh, who wants to go first? Who wants to jump right in? I do. Terry, good. Um, okay, I'm gonna jump in um, from the point of uh, children. Mm -hmm. um, children, as I say, are our future, especially just generation. Um, and I wanna bring that all together with the federal funding that has just been released for all school districts and how that money needs to be used. Um, and, <laughs> and the fact that in 1844, the American Psychiatry Association of America was formed in 1844. In January of 2021, they issued a letter of apology to the BIPOC community of the systematic racism that they instilled in the mental health practices up to the current day. So therefore, any of the mental health learnings that our psychiatrists have had are based on systematic racism. And as someone who works to advocate for children's mental health, I think that's a big WTF. Because now I just sent a letter to DMH and asked them what are their services and supports based on now if we just got an apology in January of this year. And when it comes to the kids, when I get pushback from CRT, critical race theory being taught in schools, 
you know, my response is that if a black child is old enough to know about racism, a white child is old enough to learn it. My kid got to experience it, you can learn it. And if we do it at this age and this, these kids, then the next generation hopefully will be based on the human race. Mm -hmm. not, the, not, not what your color is because I don't want my son to go from being cute to his skin making him a criminal. Mm -hmm. So um, are you talking about these, these funds that were given for the social emotional learning, um, those, those funds that were given to no, it, There were, I have a spreadsheet if everyone wants it of every single district in this state. There were three sets of what they call ESSER funds that came from the American Rescue uh, package. ESSER one was released when we first went back in September. ESSER two districts got in April of this year. ESSER three, they have between July 1st and October 1st to apply for. Mm -hmm. Now, for instance, SO3 has very strict restrictions. For instance, where I live in Falmouth, their SO3 is $3.4 million, which has a capacity to have another $2 million added in. However, DESE says that in that money, they have to have stakeholder, parent, civil organizations, teachers involved in how that money is spent. 20% of that money has to address learning loss. Other portions have to address diversity and inclusion. The district is not going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. I am now have the superintendent of Falmouth has agreed to come out into the communities where people are and have these conversations, the black, Indian, Asian, Brazilian, where they're at in the community this summer as a quote unquote ambassador. Mm -hmm. But that's what, and, that, and if parents don't know that, they have the ability to take those SO3 funds and use expenses that they had for March of 2020. Mm -hmm. Our kids are not gonna see this kind of financial funding in their lifetime again. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure those funds are used the best way possible. Mental health has to be first. The social emotional gold standard is the castle infrastructure. Now I have Malmuth agreeing that they, they have agreed that any teacher that wants to take the castle infrastructure training in July, which is four sessions, that they are going to do it. So you have to make sure and make sure that all practices are evidence-based, especially with the dyslexia mandate that starts in September of this year. Don't let them try and pull a quick one and give you a research-based program because it's not going to work. That's like with the vaccine. Would you have taken it if it was only research-based and not evidence-based being tried on humans? That's the same way we have to look at education in our children. So let me ask you, did you, um, did you bring this to their attention and then they agreed to come out into the community and educate the community on those funds or did were they doing that prior to you bringing that? No, no, they weren't. So you brought it to, to her attention, the, the principal now she- I forced them to do it. I went to Desi, Desi yeah. called them. I filed a federal complaint against them for discrimination, for suspending a higher number of black children than white children. And that's what the OCR right now. Okay, because I see in our district in Mashpee, we got a, um, an email and it talked about where those where they're gonna spend that social emotional learning, um, what do you call it, ESSER? ESSER, E-S-S-E-R. Yeah, ESSER funds. Cause the only reason I knew about that was because she told me about a month ago and she sent me that spreadsheet, which I never really took a deep dive into cause I have so much going on, but at least I knew of it. So when I got the email telling me where they're going to spend that money and I think it was just like um, something that had nothing, no connection to me, and I think it involved like three kids or something. Um, you know, I got to look at it, but um, that's interesting, you know, because I did not get um, asked or any input into where that money's spent. So um, we hear you, Terry, and um, anyone listening, if you're interested in that and asking 
your school systems about that, those funds. You can probably call Terry. <laughs> yes, Mary Jane? Yeah, um, I'm really interested, uh, but I, I need some backup. Um, Dennis Yarmouth Schools has um, had, had a series of discussions on DEI. So I, I looked that up as best I could and found that it's diversity. Um, equity uh, inclusion. Equity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. and But I couldn't find any of the um, issues there. So this was some people were apparently going to school committee meeting complaining about the DEI funds. Some students from the middle school did an awesome job um, in their parents speaking up. Yes. And I didn't know enough to say anything, but I'm trying to find out information about that. And I'm very interested in the social emotional learning because before COVID, that was all the programs that we did for students with special needs and diverse alternative learners. Mm -hmm. um, so where do we find you, Terry? Um, Other than here? Yeah, no, my, <laughs> my full name without any spaces, it's Terry Alves Hunter, all one at gmail.com. Can you put it in the chats, please? Yeah, so Mary Jane there, um, what happened in Dennis Yarmouth was there was a group of, a small group of very vocal people mm -hmm. who were um, it, coming to school committee meetings, I guess, in opposition of um, DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, yeah. having that kind of training in their school system. And I think there were, you know, other folks pushed back on that. So they had live Zoom um, uh, meetings and um, folks showed up. Yeah, I went to the second one, but I hadn't okay. been to the first where the uh, hullabaloo happened. Yeah, so then, the, yeah, the okay. second one kind of took care of that first one. So I'm hearing, right, Marie? Did we hear that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm hearing it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I was there, and the, the students did such a good job. Um, yeah, so young folks showed up. That's what we yeah. need. Sometimes, yeah. you know, we got to stand up. You know, and sometimes right. the, the, the children will lead and they led and those folks kind of backed down. They weren't as vocal the second time around, you know. Right. Yeah, so I, I had prepared something to write to the school, but I wanted to see really the um, something real of what it was about. Is it connected to what you're talking about, Terry? Is the DEI um, I, connected? Let me, I, let me tell you what I understood um, and um, maybe that will help a little bit. Um, Thank you. And, you know, a lot of the school districts, including Mashpee, issued a statement, came together, the school committees, and, and uh, made a statement um, referencing what the stand should be in their schools in terms of equity, inclusion, whatever. They all might be a little different. Right. And my understanding was <clears throat> that um, this small, but, and I don't know this for sure, but my understanding is that a small vocal group came out and said, why do we need that kind of a statement? Yes, that's what I heard. That would be what my, my um, right. understanding of it is. And then people did <clears throat> rise to the occasion and say, well, okay. But I, wh what I would like to talk about is I think, and I'm gonna go back to something that Morgan mm -hmm initiated at the very beginning. Um, and that is, um, I'm a little concerned um, about um, the, the view across the country now is almost like, um, you know, that there's kind of like people um, are fighting, uh, in, you know, certain right wingers, obviously don't want to see diversity training, don't want to yep. see these diversity, you know, <clears throat> and I'm very um, concerned about the way that this critical racial theory is that CRT is being thrown around. And um, my concern is that it's kind of almost like defund the police. It's inter mm. misinterpreted. And I think that we need to really look at that and be aware of some of the the groups that are coming even in our towns that's said to me there's <clears throat> again a small group but i just think that we need to be prepared um uh it, it, as these obviously these students did we we need to be able to to recognize when it starts to come up people are running for school boards 
things of that area that have that philosophy and you know, fight any any diversity training but you know it's in a way you know that's fine for the congress to come up with okay we're going to make juneteenth a day but if you're not going to allow schools to teach actual history right. see you it's a it's you know in conflict so you can say okay well yeah, we're going to have Juneteenth, but we're not going to allow you to teach what it is. All right. So um, I think if we just switch around and uh, well, understand, as I understand it, critical racial theory is something that is taught in universities, not in public schools. OK, and we need to understand that, that it's a, it's a whole different thing. It's taught in law school. What we really need to keep focusing on is it's simply teaching history as it occurred. Yes. And yeah. that's what we need to focus on now. So um, as some of you know, you know, I started the last year, we have a coalition now of different committees that are forming all the way from Provincetown to Dedham, all the way along the coast. So we're calling it the uh, Cape Cod South Shore um, Diversity Coalition, informal kind of thing where we are meeting at least so far it's been zoom and probably will be because it's so far you know the distance but we're going to have a meeting in july and i'm going to just bring that up with the with all of these committees and say okay are you prepared for <coughs> our communities and how are you going to handle it and respond to it in a positive way because it is yeah. i'm just getting a little uncomfortable um about about that and we just need to be um, alert. Now, let's talk about Dennis Yarmouth. When I went around to, and I, I sought out committees that were, we had some that were established, but there were committees that were just suddenly being formulated. That's how I got, I, Gretchen will know, will know something about this in Sandwich. I got wind basically that some kind of committee was going to be formulated under their school committee, I contacted the superintendent immediately and said, okay, when you get it together, would you want them to be in our coalition? The same thing's happening in Provincetown, okay. I didn't find anything for Dennis Yarmouth and I was quite surprised at that, to be quite honest. So this is the first I've heard. Dennis Yarmouth does not have a no place to hate group as far as I know in the community, does not have um, you know, a town, committee the only <coughs> thing now is dennis yarmouth having his dei which i did not know under their sub under their school committee my next step is to contact them and say would you like to be part of our coalition and that's the way we're going to do it we just have to all be together on this and work together so the more towns that we can bring in either school committee subcommittees or regular town committees or uh, you know what are ad hoc committees then we bring them together and we have to have a unified approach and realize that this can be occurring and need to be to respond that's a good question terry terry asked a question are these committees and coalitions culturally represent representative of their communities you know um I don't know for sure. The problem with that is that I'm on Zoom. So I only see yeah, you can't see. I only see the, I see the representatives, okay, um, who are there, like <coughs> representatives from each coalition. Um, I can tell you that um, you know the the sincerity and the concern um, and the need, the people who need to formulate these committees are right there, you know, um, and whether they are culturally, you know, rep diversely represented, <coughs> um, we, have, we have to look at the community that they're coming from. So if you have like a 90% white, <laughs> you know, community like Sandwich, you may have more white people than you do, you know, to ask, well, can you have representation of different diversity Maybe, maybe not, you know, uh, but that doesn't mean, in my estimation, you know, I'm as white as could be, as you can see, that doesn't mean I'm not uh, concerned about social justice and, um, and ready to be an ally in very, you know, major ways. So, um, you know, it's a goal, 
I can tell you that um, when I have my my committee is uh, nine people um, plus um, support, you know, uh, non voting members from the school who tend to the high school, the students tend to be um, more diverse. Um, I um, when I sought out um, uh, to get a, a committee member um, of of color uh, who I had and then the person moved away. Um, I contacted wherever, whoever I could, and um, I called, you know, contacted John Reed, NAACP, mm. whatever, and had no luck with that. So it isn't that I, I myself, you know, haven't tried that. <coughs> but uh, that being said, on our committee, and that kind of ties in with what others were saying, one of my committee members is the superintendent of schools, okay? And that's really key. That is really key. Yeah. And, um, and we have a unique situation in Nashville too, because we have um, a tribal situation that other towns don't have. We have a, a, a tribe, Wampanoag tribe, and, and uh, that's required by the Board of Selectmen that we have a, a one member from the tribe who we have, have from day one um, represented, the schools represented. Um, we, ha we have had the former <coughs> of um, Pride on our committee, um, so we have we have a variety of uh, of people there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, I just want to move the conversation along. Um, you know, the the name of the show today is how do we keep the conversation going, right? And um, you know, a lot of it's about messaging and just you know, indicative of this call right now. There's, you know, we're we're hearing different points of views from different parts of town and. And different people, and I think when we talk about CRT, and we oh, I'm gonna get to you in a minute, Morgan. Where are you? I saw you. In a minute. Okay, one minute. When we talk about CRT and we talk about um, all these issues, right? It sounds so confusing, right? People have. I, I think the messaging is very confusing, yeah. and it's meant to be confusing, right? Because no one really <laughs> has a clear definition of what that really means, right? Oh, it's not going to be taught in the schools. Oh, it is going to be taught because it's going to be taught on high school level, I mean college level, right? And what does that really mean? And that only bodes well for um the folks who are trying to confuse you and at the ballot box, right? So we're going to be headed towards midterms election elections soon. And what um race is always an issue at election time. Right. And, and these things are going to be used um, and abused during that time. So we really need to think about that and, and work on some clarity of messaging when we're having these conversations. OK, Morgan, you're on. Um, ah, well, conversations. One that I wanted to make folks aware of, this will be a presentation in the um, fall that I'll be making through the Barnesville County Human Rights um, Advisory Commission. This is a special presentation for parents of um, students, brown, black and brown students in the Cape Cod school system, particularly middle school and high school age. And um, it's a very frank discussion on how to successfully navigate Unfreeze, unfreeze. He's good. How do we unfreeze him? Um, will be so. You, th these will be. Some you were of the frozen. You were frozen for a moment. Oh, he's frozen again. Mm. Okay. I hope we get the full breath of what he says because he's he's really got some some knowledge there, so professor. Um, hopefully we can get, get him unfrozen. In the meantime, I'm just gonna read from the chats what Terry's saying. Um, the lived experience is very important piece to change the narrative. We must have this important uh, lived express in Falmouth. They have had DEP, DEI position open for over a year and still haven't interviewed for it. And they have a federal uh, position two years ago that retired and just ignored it. Okay, are you ready now? Because you were frozen. So 
Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me so, now? Yes. Can you start? Oh, okay. Start from the beginning because you froze. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So through the Barnstable County Human um, Rights Advisory Commission, in the fall, I'll be doing a presentation. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. Hmm. I wonder where his connection is. Hmm. Yeah. So we're going to have to, yeah, something is wrong with oh. his connection. I can't wait to hear about that fall, the presentation oh. uh, to high school and middle school students, which I'm hearing we're having um, more and more conversations are popping up in more and more schools, particularly Falmouth. Um, about that, he should shut his video off yeah, and just talk. Yes, yes. Or maybe. Can you just talk without your video? Does that work better? He, he might not hear. Oh. Okay. Second leading cause of death is suicide. Okay. You got a lot going on there, Terry. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so, um, okay, does anybody else have something they wanna say while we wait for for him to get back okay. up? Okay. Okay, how's yeah. this? Okay. Uh, all right, all right, okay. hang on, hang on one second. Okay, perfect. There we go, this should work even better. All right, plus it's fresh air, nice. All right. Um, so for the Barnstable County Human Rights Advisory Commission in the fall, I am doing a presentation and it's geared for parents of black and brown students on, in Cape Cod schools, primarily middle school through high school. And it's a very frank discussion on how to navigate the public school system for your child by recognizing that, and this is just systemically based, the public school system was actually designed against your child. And these are things that need to be accepted, acknowledged, and in particular, parents need to stop drinking the Kool-Aid and learn this is what you need to do to get your kid through school. And having just, um, pardon me for saying, but very successfully gotten my child through the public school system and having to be constantly aware of dynamics of public education and recognizing that these dynamics of public education have not changed one iota in decades. When I realized that my mother went through the public school system in New York City many years ago and experienced the exact same things that I experienced in the public school system 30 years later. And then <laughs> here I am now um, watching many of the exact same things happen with my own child. Mm -hmm. and realize he's not alone. And as I talk to other parents, I'm like, okay, this is, th this is, a, this is a problem. Yes. And just sort of, so it's basically looking at what I refer to as best practices from the last 175 years of educating our black and brown children. Because recognizing what my grandmother had to do to get her children through the Mashpee public school system is not much different than what I had to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, so these are, these are going to be, this is going to be one of the conversations that we end up having. The other piece that we have to start looking to um, around organizing is honestly in line with that, the issues of self-reliance. One of the dynamic factors that we have to accept and embrace is that if we were raised in this society we've been indoctrinated with the concept of white supremacy mm -hmm. from birth, mm -hmm. present. It's a foundation principle of the United States and we mm -hmm. have to accept that reality. Mm -hmm. With that being part of, with that being said, a lot of what ends up in place and sometimes a lot of the fixes does, are designed to sort of like maintain that, that power, mm -hmm. that status quo. It's um, even when I locally, and it, it's, always, it's always been interesting because when I look at efforts, when they talk about they wanna diversify, um, the approach to diversification 
becomes a manner of speaking almost like a quota based shell game. Mm. Yes. Because we want to diversify a committee, so we want to have an equal representation. And then in our efforts to have an equal representation, nine times out of 10, we still end up with a minority of black and brown faces <laughs> at the table. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it's now we've added one or two, but then there's also how much do these black and brown faces that have been invited to the table challenge fragility mm -hmm. yeah. as opposed to supporting it or saving it or continuing it mm -hmm. you know how many are going you know how many well i don't like what this person says i don't like what this person stands for i don't like what this person does etc so mm -hmm. we're not going to have them on the committee so what we do is we try to find the least offensive black and brown faces to put at mm -hmm. the white table mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is this is a situation that I see happen. You know, this is a dynamic that I see happen all over when we talk about diversity. So the right. issue then becomes, if we're going to have any kind of level of equity, we need to, we need to organize. Mm -hmm. We can't expect equity. We can't expect equity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from a system that's designed against us and from people who have been desensitized to even recognize a system that's been designed against us. You know, for, for example, <laughs> this, and you know, I have to and commend you for even for having this kind of dialogue. This is exactly the kind of thing that I'm talking about. This now becomes a dialogue mm -hmm. where the voices that are at the table are not just are, are not just uh, placements, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. But, yeah. But but nonetheless, as the information about the as we get more of a final date and so forth for the um school presentation, I will definitely share that. That's with a you. good just point. Actually, Instead of wondering where the black and brown faces are on the committees, the black and brown faces ought to organize the committees, you know, um, and become the power structure in their own change that they want to see in their own committees. Because I, Otherwise, we're, we, we are just a placement, you know, a placeholder. And that is so true, Morgan, the least offensive person. You know, they never look to um, certain people. It's just, the, you know, the same old, same old. And, you know, put a person here, put a person here. I find it quite, it, it just really burns me that, you know, when you talk about the Wampanoag community, we need to have a... One, 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 one little correction because I keep hearing this. We are the Mashpee Wampanoag. Mashpee. Yes. Wampanoag, okay. Wampanoag is a nation that comprises yes. Eastern yes. Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, people keep yeah, yeah. So it's it's the Mashpee tribe. Just just okay. Here. The Mashpee Wampanoag. Thanks for enlightening us. And I was just enlightened um, recently to that as well. Again, again, not um, for the first time, but. Yeah, the mashing walk on, but just the fact that, you know, we need to have a representation um, in a land that they inhabited for 12,000 years before, you know, anyone. It's, it just blows me away, you know. Um, I'm going to that... challenge this. I'm, I'm getting a little concerned about this, and um, I, I'm going to challenge it because you said to be honest, right? I'm going to be honest. No, no, we always need to be honest, right? We're having a conversation. Notion, okay. Mm -hmm. If then we are asked to, call, to create a diversity committee, which we mm -hmm. were about three years ago, mm -hmm. we have a very long list of diverse groups. So mm -hmm. our challenge is not to just address one particular um, group, okay. We're trying to look at a lot of a lot of different groups, mm -hmm. and that's a tough challenge, you mm -hmm. know. And so, you know, um, the way I'm looking at that is, I mean, what are you saying, you know? So, if you want this nine member committee mm -hmm. in your town, mm -hmm. um, you know, are you saying that let let's just say, okay, so we have a certain percentage of people of color, a certain percentage of people that are gay, a certain percentage of age, a certain, you, you start naming that. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you going to determine who should be on this committee? You have to have a representation of a lot of diversities if 
and I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying, if there is a group, um, a separate group that wants to form in a particular group, be it gays, be it, you know, whatever group you want, and then speak to, to this committee that's trying to address all areas, you know what I'm saying? But I think you're talking about two different two different things. That's what we are talking about. Two yeah. different things. I, 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 I kind of yeah. think I so kind of think you're being defensive about the wrong point because yeah. it's not a matter of the nine member group. The nine member group is really nice. The problem is that we look to the nine member group for what should be hand what 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 goes sort of beyond the representation of the nine member group, if you will. So it. it you know, what, what happens is we look at, something like you said, the nine member group and people think, oh, great, this is going to do it. But the oh. nine member group is going to be completely effectual if they aren't involved, you know, if, if it's not working with the other groups and the other groups, as I was saying, do need to, as Marie was saying, we, you know, do need to organize among ourselves if we actually want to see things addressed within our, with, that actually uh, relate to our interests. And so I by all means, nine I member group, the, the nine member group can the nine member group can be supportive. And, you know, and, and the thing is, ally can only be really determined by the people who are being who are being worked with. You can be supportive, but only if I see you as an, my ally, can I say you're my ally. You can't come up and identify yourself as such. You know, so so that, you know, in, in terms of linguistics, those are some of the things we need to be aware of as well. But by no shape, form or fashion, are we saying the nine member group is a problem. But what I'm saying is that, yeah, that's the way that that's structured. It's structured that way for a reason, but we should not look to your nine member group. We should not look to the Barnesville County Human Rights um, Advisory Council, et cetera as the be all end all voice of authority or anything like that, especially in addressing this because they are more in a support capacity, but we in terms of addressing our needs, requirements, et cetera, need to take the lead. Mm -hmm. no, I, hence I work, hence workshops that. like the best practice. I don't disagree with that. And yeah. one quick example, for example, now with our committee and we're relatively new um, and it's, it's a tough, it's a tough call here, whether you want to, you know, hear that or not. And, um, one of the things is that we had a group within the community, not on our committee, who were members of the Baha'i uh, beliefs and then others that moved into town that had been involved with this race amity concept. Well, those, those people came to us and said to the committee, will you create, you know, will you have um, an event? Will you support race amity? And that's an example of what we did, you know, and that's why we just had this, our first race amity day festival event rather than juneteenth rather than pride month we made a decision that what could we do and what could we do well but that was a direct response to people within the community so i totally agree with you with that yes if there are definitely i try to bring i try to bring people in from different groups to represent um their uh their feelings and their concerns and that that's what how a committee should operate but I look at it as there are two groups. You, if, if you're white and straight, you're one group. If you're not, you're the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to go through the chats really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Terry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Does this, anybody else agree with that? Or want to speak to that? I would. I, I would say in the modern times, there's even. Um, I, I wouldn't even say the straight is as much of an issue. When you look at the various advancements in um, acceptance and progression of gender neutral, of the LGBTQ um, community jumping over what I would say is, you know, the sort of like intersectionality or uh, reverse intersectionality has even limited that. But I still issue. think there's, there's people way that, more accepted. that are not white and are not straight can combine right, their right. experiences that they can understand and unite and oh, hopefully I, I have that conversation. I misunderstood you. Yeah, but that's, you know what I mean? No, no, they I have something that I, they can. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I misunderstood your first point. I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 I, no, no. That's okay. I, I just wanted to add, I went to a DEI conference and they did something that was really amazing. They had a uh, white moderator, a black moderator. 
They took all the white people in one room, all the black people in another. So everybody could be feel free, say whatever they wanted and not be judged by the other race. Mm -hmm. And they all came back together in the room. Mm -hmm. The moderators, without pointing anybody out, brought all this up. And then they were able to have a civil conversation. And the key thing was that was that it really like blew my mind is they asked the people, when you wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. what are the top three things you think about? Mm -hmm. All the black people, race was one of them, not one of the white people. White people said they didn't think of race mm -hmm. unless they were around somebody that was a different race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah come at things a different way. And um, this topic um, in, you know, Marie and others, whoever, you know, where we, this issue of race, right? We're, we're in it right now, right? The winds of change, I keep saying are blowing, right? We're in, um, it's being amplified. Everything we talk about, think about, right? In our corporations and our communities and our schools is centering around this issue of race and we have to address it. We need to address it and, uh, and we ought to address it. And it's an uncomfortable conversation, right? Um, I was in training for the last couple of days and when we started, we would do check-ins in the morning. How are you feeling? And um, the people of color, the black people, they started off by saying, and I know I did, I was like, I'm, I'm at peace. You know, I, they wanted to know how you felt emotionally, how you felt physically, and then um, what are you thinking? So I was like, I'm at peace, um, I feel relaxed. And I'm just thinking about the fact that this is probably the last peaceful, relaxing day I have until the end of summer because my son's out of school. And, um, you know, 90% of the white people said, I'm, I, they were thinking about what they were anxious about saying the wrong thing mm -hmm. in the in the forum. I mean, one after another, that was their 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 anxiety was about saying the wrong thing. And I was taking a mental note of that, you know. I don't know if the facilitator was, but I was. And it was really telling to me that in having these conversations you know, that it gets hard because people, sometimes they're guarded. We don't really want to say what we mean, what we feel, you know, because it's hard and we feel like we're going to offend someone um, or that the conversation could go off the, re the rails. But what this show is about is how do we continue to have these conversations even when they're hard? How do we continue to sit with people in our communities? How do we continue to, to dialogue with people on social media, you know, at our workplaces in these committees and keep the conversation moving forward and knowing there are gonna be people who are gonna be offended. There's gonna be people who are gonna cry. They're gonna leave the room, but we're not called to fix anybody. You know what I mean? You guys have to understand that, that people have triggers and things that they come to the table with. We all do, right? We have our own stuff that we got going on. We have our own um, values and, 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 and um, things that mean something to us, right? So you have your own luggage that you're carrying and someone may say something that may trigger something in you. Um, but that doesn't mean we stop the conversation, right? That means we have to find ways in which to articulate, really have the receipts. When you go to have a, a conversation, have, have your, your facts, you know, of what you're talking about. So when you're talking about yeah, when you're talking about CRT, know what you're talking about before you bring it up, you know, kind of right. know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because otherwise you're just gonna be in this one big, you know, and I, I would suggest you don't talk about it really because you really don't have, it has nothing to do with you right now. It's not being taught in your school. Um, 
it, it is designed, it's out there now to confuse and confound the conversation, mm -hmm. right? And that it's gonna bode well at the ballot box if 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 we can't get a handle on on what it really means and what it really means to us. I, I think that's my opinion. Um, but we need to continue the conversation, you know, and everybody on this call has been here before and it, and you are the ones who are interested in doing the work in your own ways. And I commend you, whatever color you are, you know, whatever race you are, I commend you. Mary Jane? Yeah, uh, all right. So I, I was interested in the two moderators, mm -hmm. um, a black person and a white person. I was moderating a um, uh, discussion with therapists on racism last fall and uh, someone, and I, I believe it was someone white in the group, said something about um, how she would feel if a black client were assigned to her. And then there were a number of comments and it got uh, way out of control. So the, um, we, we've, that's, we started that white supremacy um, year long process in there using a very interesting um, method called the circle, um, the circle way, do you know yeah. that? Yes. Yeah where um, you, you break into small groups, you have um, agreements is what their language is of confidentiality. And a number of um, agreements are people write how they feel, but uh, with the understanding that it will stay uh, confidential in the group. Small groups of four or five, no one is to be judgmental or challenged. Anyhow, it is very um, tightly controlled so that this case it's therapists can get in touch with how they feel about racial issues. It's based on the uh, white supremacy, um, Layla Saad's um, book. And uh, there were a number of people who color, of color who started the, who started the course and then um, dropped out, which was fine because it is the white person's work to do, as you said, Marie. Uh, but that circle way would make it safe. What? I never said. Didn't anything. you say it's a, not the white person, the, we, you said black people can't do it for white. No, I'm sorry, the other way around. Um, what, what you just said before, that we have to do our own work. Okay, I'm I not the that, mind, yeah. Yeah, it, I thought it, that's it, what, uh, mm -hmm. it Go came ahead. out the wrong way. But anyhow, so that, that would be a very, um, it, it's a very safe way to explore and get in, in touch and then come back do together, but I like the idea of the two moderators, uh, perhaps with people who've been through it. And um, I, I was astounded at the um, comments from people who worked in mental health clinics, that um, whew, the conversations have to happen. Mm -hmm. Ray, do you want to add anything to the conversation today? <laughs> Uh, put me on the spot, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I was actually, uh, th this is probably a random thought, but I was just thinking about, um, uh, I learned recently that the editor-in-chief of the uh, Journal of the American Medical Association stepped down because he, he in, a, in a conversation or in a blog, no, yeah, it was a podcast, um, said that um, he wasn't racist and that no physicians were racist. And um, and I was thinking, you know, that's that's sort of overwhelming to try to overcome that, um, you know, when you 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 you. I was just, you know, I, I was connected with a thought. I was just having that, you know, to have these conversations, you have to first start with a receptive audience, um, because if you have a receptive audience who isn't going to fight you tooth and nail as soon as you start to talk about race um, or racism. Um, you know, it, it just becomes overwhelming because, you know, it just turns into one of these dog fights where, you know, I'm right, no, you're right, you know, so forth. Mm -hmm. But what everybody needs is a, a, you know, a safe space to have those conversations and, a, and, a, and this, a receptive audience. And, you know, so I'm just thinking about the committees I'm on, you know, the, the clock DEI committee and as well as this national, you know, this committee I'm on a working group for diversity for the National Institutes of Health and 
we have some pretty frank conversations in that NIH group. In fact, we've had conversations where the Zoom recording has been turned off so people can speak honestly. But that group is also um, very, um, uh, you know, whites are a minority. I think there's maybe one white guy on that particular committee. Um, mm. There's two Asians and, you know, the rest are um, blacks and um, Latino, Latinas. And uh, actually one Pacific Islander and one um, uh, Native American. Um, but, you know, to come back to Falmouth and the clock committee, um, you know, I, I really feel like as a chair of the committee that we want everybody to be able to say their thing and have a, a safe space to, to um, so everybody can speak their mind. And, and so I generally prefer to have uh, go around the table and have people talk about what their opinions are. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, just in terms of the overall topic of, you know, how do you keep those conversations going? Um, you know, people really do need to feel, feel safe to speak out honestly and, and not be challenged at the moment, you know, that by speaking honestly that as, and it works best with a small group, that as a small group, you could come together as a consensus. And the first part of that consensus is listening, you know, that you listen to what other people have to say mm -hmm. um, and try to understand what they're saying and then push the ideas back and forth and then ultimately come to a consensus about, you know, whatever your next, uh, step is or what your action plan is or you know and if we don't think about short goals you know if we if we think um that our goal is to solve racism you know we are going to become incredibly overwhelmed right from the beginning because that's a huge target and mm -hmm. structural racism exists in virtually every organization we have here in the united states and you know and i'm you know I, i'm battling things that you know in the national institutes of health and in universities um and let alone, you know, maybe, uh, you know, smaller organizations. So um, it, it's better to think incrementally, like what's our short-term goal? What, what's the first goal we need to achieve and how do we get there? And then let's feel good about getting there and then take the next step. Cause it, you know, it's, it's just too overwhelming to, to take, you know, tackle a really big uh, problem right away. So mm -hmm. that's my two cents. Uh -huh. That was good. Yes, yes. And sometimes you got to uh, name, name the problem. Sometimes people don't even understand the problem, and we get into these conversations, and and we people sometimes people co-opt the conversation with other things and other ideas, and we have to um, stay on topic, right? If we're talking about racism or systemic, you know, racism, we have to name that right, and try to stay on topic and, and, and direct and guide folks to, to, to stay on that topic. One of the things that I think works in conversation is the building of relationships. You know, it's been a year and we all have um, been coming together, right, in the sharing of our lived experiences and stories. Um, and that's why I always try to invite people in, right, and acknowledge people um, right where they are and through the building of relationships, I think we at least can get to the place where we can hear, hear one another, right? Lynette, I see your hand up. Love to hear from you. Hi, um, hi, Moa. Um, I guess being brought up and raised in Roxbury is quite different living in the South Shore now. Um, me growing up in the inner city, um, there was all different nationalities and races. And we all back then seemed to get along. If there was racism, I, I really didn't see it. I really didn't know it because we went to school together. We played together. We ate together. We slept over each other's houses. This new wave of racism, everything, you can't say this, you can't say that, or when should I say it, or is it wrong to say it? Um, this is, at my age, to me, this is new to me, you know, because we dealt with this years ago and it was no big thing. Um, 
people need to look deep down inside and I don't think it's them per se. I think it's the ancestors, ancestors from way back when. And I think in some of the houses it was still carried on, in some of the houses it wasn't. I mean, being of the ancestries of slavery, I mean, we've been through a lot and we've come to the front of saying, we know who we are now, we know what we are, and we know where we're trying to go. Um, there are people that are trying to stop us, which I don't think they will because it's weird because these rich Caucasian whites, their daughters and sons are intermarrying races of all over. So now we see all colors. We're not just one color no more. And I mean, I think it's a blessing because we're standing up when we're standing tall. And I know we bring in like the police and stuff like that. And I mean, these are human beings. We're all human beings. Some of us make mistakes and some of us are just shouldn't be on that job. And we should be doing other things instead of being police officers or something that's in, on top of someone that's just being an aggravated, nasty person. Mm -hmm. um, but me, myself, and I, I think one day we're all going to come as one and it's not going to be no race. That's my mm -hmm. feeling. So, Kevin, first off, I'm oh, oh, sorry. I, I first have to greet my worthy grand matron. It was nice. <laughs> I said hi. Uh, I, I, but it, it's, 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 it's interesting. Oh. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just trying to ask no, her where she, was... did when she was staying, spending the night with, over white people's house, too. Yes. Really? Okay. Yes. In Boston. But, In but Roxbury, the... yes. Okay. All right. But OK, no, no, the one point that I wanted to make was Roxbury, we, we do have to consider a certain level of insular behavior, because bear in mind, we're part of the Prince Hall family. Our Grand Lodge is not the one downtown, which for the longest time was referred to as the mainstream lodge. We are part, we, in fact, the United States <coughs> has the unique history of having racially segregated Freemasonry. That doesn't exist any place else in the world except except the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so we have to consider that that <clears throat> that is part of our history. That is part of our legacy. So yeah, the 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 insular experience does remove you from a lot of you know does remove you from a lot of the racism. Like I, I remember um, growing up in New York City. I grew up in an ethnically diverse area, but a lot of but a lot of my friends when I got to high school, I went to high I grew up in the Bronx, but I went to high school in Manhattan, which was a citywide high school, and found that any number of my friends who um, came from different boroughs, the boroughs were segregated. Other, you know, it was not it was not a unique situation. The boroughs were segregated, so you had kids who were coming from like. Um, Woodhaven, which was primarily white and Jewish, who this is the first time they're going to school with black and Hispanic kids. You had black and Hispanic kids from like Bed-Stuy and the South Bronx, where this is the first time they're going to school with um, Jewish kids and Italian kids. So, you know, it, it is that sort of like now, you know, the proof is in the pudding that when we actually come to the point of encountering. So the, the new wave of racism that we're looking at in Roxbury is actually brought about because of gentrification. The neighborhoods are changing, the property values are changing. I remember they just pointed to a three-story um, wood, woody, wood-framed house that's now up for sale for a million point five dollars that back in 2003 sold for 170,000. Okay. And this is in the middle, this is in the middle of Mattapan and, and where this wow. house is for sale, which is why it was being pointed off. This part of Mattapan um, a couple of days ago was just sealed off by the police because of a shooting but the house in the middle of that block is selling for a million five so you know th this is this so the change that you the change that you're seeing grand matron is is part of that political shift mm -hmm. oh gentrification oh yeah gentrification oh, yeah. yes um which, well, is, which is colonization which is white supremacy 
in well, operation. The governor, the governor has just signed yeah, baby. And the proclamation for Prince Hall to become a national holiday. So Here we go. We're, I mean, we're moving all the time and it's not going to be overnight. I might not ever see it, but hoping in the long run, someone will see it for the better. That's and I, like I said, I grew up, we, I went to school with whites and blacks and, you know, when the Spanish moved in, I went to school with them. I mean, the diverse in the inner city, to me, it's already a part of us. Yes. If, right, I, right. if I was down here yeah. from the, the very beginning, I'd be like, if I go to Rockstar, I'd be like, what? You know? Yeah. I mean, that's just normal to me. Me too. Yeah, but I grew up in Boston um, and went to school in Lexington. And when we moved into Mattapan, all the white folks moved out, like upon arrival, you know? Mm -hmm. They packed up in like, whew, services and then with them went all the services so you had trash pick up in your backyard you had all that good stuff you had mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. all that they all left like they i mean yeah. you could just see them run and and then we went to school i went to school on the street where i lived and and then um desegregation happened and um to go to school one mile from my house and take a bus at a school they were trying to segregate, um, desegregate. Mm. Um, folks from South Boston came over to my neighborhood and threw rocks at our bus and and and, and spit at oh. the bus. Right. So I don't know that city you lived in. Um, you know, you you're younger than I remember. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you're I, younger I, than I. I. I mean, my dad's older than me, and he described. Um, having to fight his way out of JP and fight his way back into his neighborhood, fight his way out and fight his way back in. So I'm just saying, I love your your I love your experience. We we were Lower Roxbury. Yeah, I love your experience and um and and I love your outlook. You know, we you mm -hmm. know um, I just I just don't have that point of reference of Boston, the only Boston mm -hmm. I know is very, very, um, everyone had their corners. South Boston, you had Roxbury, you had Dorchester, and it was just very, you know. But we knew where to go and where not to go, but the people that we grew up with, they were like sisters and brothers. Yeah, well. I mean, you know. we had those kind of friends, yeah. I mean, when people started breaking apart and started moving out and stuff like that, they call it the white flight. Yeah. But we still, my friends, we would still meet, even though our parents didn't know that we met. Oh, so you fled. Okay, they fled, but you were, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, we are after the five o'clock hour and I wow. appreciate you guys coming wow. to to this mm -hmm. conversation. And I think we really talked about how to keep these conversations going. We recognize that they're hard, right? And we recognize mm -hmm. that we need to keep having them and we keep we need to keep doing the work and there's a lot of work to be done, right? And we are equipped for the work. We know we are, right? Because we all are some good folks, some well-read folks and, um, you know, we can continue to join those committees, form committees, whatever we need to do to keep amplifying the message. We show up for one another. So if you need us there, brother, at your talk, we'll come. So, mm -hmm. you know, let us know if you, you know, if you need us, but I, um, I don't know if we're invited, but. Oh, of course. I'd okay. love, I'd love to be a fly on the wall uh, you, at that. You, you, you have a young man, still, you have a young man yeah. who I'm very proud of, by the way, who still has to get through the school system. Yeah. So yeah, by all means. When you, I mean, when you spoke, I was like, you know, you have no idea um, to, to be black and then to have that 
you know, diverse ability. So couple those things together. And it's easy to want to push someone through the system without giving them the, the due that they deserve, you know, the education oh, yeah. well, that they deserve because they deserve to be educated properly, right? So well, I'm, I'm glad I, I know folks like you and Terry and others um, that- Well, let me, let me give you two quick notes. I mean, I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off. No, uh, go ahead. But no, I was gonna say one case in point. In eighth grade, when Zig was in eighth grade, I was told college was, was probably an unrealistic goal for him. Uh, he was accepted to every college that he applied to. And I don't know if you all have seen the list of scholarships that he received, but um, yeah. my, wallet, my wallet is, is gonna be very happy for the next couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but um, but you know, so so just an example of yeah, okay, you know, the, the same school system that was telling him this now had to you know turn around and eat crow, as the young man where college wasn't a realistic goal. Now they had graduated with a three point eight average, and he, know, and he finished his and he finished his last two years of high school by actually going to four C's because that was the curriculum he needed. So, you know, th this, these are some of the points to talk about, but on a very, very positive note, what I wanted to share with everybody is the project that we launched called the South Coast Thump and Soul Movement, where every month we release new music, the Groove Alato, ZYG 808, um, I'm doing solo stuff. We even have an artist called Shadow Master gonna be gonna come out with some things, but we created a playlist on Spotify that now has almost 4,000 followers. Mm. So if you, if you are a spot if you are a Spotify listener or subscriber, please add the playlist South Coast Thump and Soul to your playlist selection because it's a way of supporting um, local musicians, local artists, local songwriters, and um, if I say so myself, some really good tunes. Mm. Oh, and we, thank you very much. Yeah, and and on Monday, the Groove Alados just re-released re uh, Do You Mind If We Dance With Your Dates, the original hit that started it all. I like that all. song. Do you, oh, yes. We, yeah, we, so we, how did you do down at um, the Preservation Hall? Uh, did, oh, no, we were, we, we were at the Payomet Center, the Payomet hey, Arts. Oh, wow. Oh, we, did, we did great. We had uh, almost 200 people mm -hmm. um, out in the field in front of us, and it was great until the mosquitoes decided to come to the party. And th then we kind of cut a couple of songs short and mm, so had to go. Uh, That's great. To so go spray ourselves just, with cutters, but, but thank you. Thank yeah, you. I, you know, it's, it's good to have a representation of, of your music too out in the community, you know, because that's a big part of, um, you know, that diversity piece when, when kids and people see representation of themselves. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. so I'd like to see you in some more theater halls and on some more stages um, so we can talk because, oh. you know, and that clock at that new building to have them there and um, we're yeah. to diversify. Um, thanks again for the space. Okay, wonderful, Gretchen. Thank you for coming. So we're not done with conversations that matter. We're just taking a little break for summer, but we're keeping... You know, again, this show was about how to keep the conversation going. So we have my front porch and my back deck and other seating areas here. So if you ever want to have conversations, we're going to be having live conversations here. We have a drum circle that we have every Friday evening if you want to come and pound it out. And you can join us for some music and hopefully you'll lead one. Uh, Morgan, anytime you can lead a drum circle because we're looking for musicians because I'm sure not one. Um, and that's Chase's <laughs> little ministry to, to keep the conversation going. Mm. So we have those kind of opportunities, but you know, check in with one another. Um, Gretchen has great books that she posts. It seems like daily that she's reading and then she gives um, little reviews on what she's read and um, the authors. So we need to keep educating ourselves. Terry's constantly putting out um, resources and information and um, where the dollars are, you know, where the trainings are. So she's on, on Facebook doing that. So stay connected with Terry as well. And then do join 
Ray and I at the College Light Opera Company this summer and see some of those productions. Um, today, my family saw Pirates of Penzance. Marie saw it last night. Excellent. When I say it was excellent for the first show, mm -hmm. they had a soprano, a young lady, and I've been, I worked for them for 12 seasons and I've never seen a voice like this. Beautiful. It was a spectacular soprano. So um, if you want to come to a show, let me know and I can hook you up. And in particular, I'm looking for children to be introduced to the theater. So um, those are some of the opportunities, but please shoot me an email if you want me to support any of your initiatives or um, want me to take a look at something. Uh, and I will do the same with you. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Can Lynette. I uh -huh. um, we have St. John's Day at Prince Hall, if anybody's interested, at um, 2 o'clock, they march from um, um, Brother Mason's, they march from Franklin Park down to Prince Hall, and they have um, a little coalition, and they have a little speeches going on, so if anybody's interested, it's 24 Washington Street, Dorchester, Mass. When, when is that? Sunday. We were glad to have you all. Um, Mawan probably knows more than me. Okay. I, okay, wonderful. So um, that sounds great. Are you in the, Verdian, uh, the Cape Verdean Museum is having its big grand opening on Friday and I believe they are celebrating the holiday that you mentioned, St. John's as well, I believe, that afternoon um, on Friday afternoon at two. Okay, we do ours Sunday. Good. One, one other. Uh -huh. well, I got one for you. I'm sorry to do this again. No. Um, this is for folks. This is for, this is for folks who like to venture over the bridge. Um, a play that I wrote is currently running at the uh, Watertown New Rep Theater called Listen to Sipu. Um, it's a play about the history of the Pequasset people who lived along the banks of what we now call the Charles River. Oh, wow. And uh, it's an outdoor, it's an outdoor experiential piece. And uh, it's been running since June 5th and it's running every weekend until July 11th. And if you go to the Watertown New Rep website, you um, can get the information on it. But what we've, a, had, a couple, we've had a couple of sold out weeks. Oh. Listen to yep. seafood. Seafood, S-I-P-U. Oh, and thank, thank you for thank you. I, I thought the same thing. Mm -hmm. like, I thought it was some, you know. No, no. So I'm, you're saying I'm, you're saying I'm Watertown, Mass. Mass? Watertown, Water, in Watertown, Mass. Oh. And and the name of the play is Listen to C, spelled S I P U, which is actually the <laughs> Wampanoag word. River. Wampanoag word for what? River. 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 Okay. Yeah. River or lake yeah My, like for example we actually we actually live in the town of Asipu, not mashby hey peggy good Lynette, so if anybody wants to how are you okay is that okay well, i guess we'll we we? be taking a trip across the well i don't have to go across the bridge oh. <laughs> mine's not sleep or cranky no, that she looks good. My back is um kind of hurting, you know, a little bit for the last four days. Yeah, all these different I, I, beds I you probably cranky, sleep. But I'm in. not really, I'm not really cranky. It's just that the aggravation from the from the back, right? You know. All right, got to I, get I that together. To, yeah, I just have to say, you know, um, I listened to the whole show, you know, on the mm -hmm. other side of the table here yes. the only thing i i have to say is um um uh, my my thought was um a common goal right even though we yes. all have um <laughs> we have different you know yes. concerns or you know situations i think that i uh, we all have a common goal right and I think the common goal is like equality right and um i think the common goal is love and and respect mm -hmm. 
right? I think that's the common goal. Mm -hmm. We should always identify mm -hmm. with that common goal. And from, from that, our conversation goes in the right direction when mm -hmm. all our arrows are pointing mm -hmm. to that, um, the commonality that we all have as, as human beings. And that's all I have to say. That's very good. To do better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's thanks. Thank All you. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. we're gonna we're gonna close this out and then I'll regroup and find out what we're gonna do um, next. But you guys take care of yourself and take care of one another. So Marie, there's the summary you're taking off from this. I'm taking yes. off um, until you see me next. <laughs> you'll, you'll be advised. You know why I, I'm not, I'm reluctant to say summer off because something good might come up and I may want to discuss okay. it. But okay. I I am here at the request of Kennedy Donovan and um, DDS and their fiscal year ends um, July. It starts again, July 1. June 30th. So, yeah, so we'll see, right? From that standpoint. Um, and so, and I, you know, the, the show has done more for, um, I, for the, for the conversation than I could have dreamed of. Right. So it's, I, I get, um, emails and texts from people that I never would have thought of that were watching or tuning in. So what you mm. see on the screen isn't all that's tuning in. So it's on Natick TV, it's on Sandwich TV. Um, all of the newspapers have written about the show. It's been on you know, the radio and things like that. So people know about the show and people are talking about the show and this conversation shows going on everywhere. But this is just another piece of that, which I'm, I'm really proud of and that we should all be proud of that we're, we're doing this. So. Um, I'm, I'm the kind of person that when called, I answer. So if, um, you know, folks want, if they call me and want me to continue and want to, um, help me to continue in the form of, you know, some compensation, then I will continue. And, um, so that being said, you'll hear from me when, when, when we make those, uh, arrangements to figure out how we're going to do this, but I think it's been a good, mm. a good and necessary thing. Yeah, keep it we, up. You're doing a good job. Oh I yes, mean, I, it's great. You're doing an we've excellent job. We've had panelists from all over the country, and I'm really proud of that yeah. as well. Some voices, and I have so many more that write to me and say, "I want to come on. I want to come on, or bring this one on and bring." So I, I really, you know, want to want to bring more people on. So I'd love to continue. That being said. We'll okay, see. Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> goals, goals, yeah. So Thank come you. on down for now. Come to the yard and have some Super Soul Sunday with Oprah in the porch. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thanks, guys, and I'll I'll see probably all of you all soon. You know. Thank you. So, yes. Bye Thank bye. you very much. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye.